Take your Bibles and turn over to the book of Acts chapter number 18. Acts chapter number 18. Again, thank you for all those that came out to help. I know we had a lot of men and women that came out yesterday to help. And uh, I appreciate the hard work and being out in the sun and all the, the work that was done in the buildings. And I appreciate it very, very much. Acts chapter number 18. And we're going to be reading Acts chapter number 18, verse number 1. Through verse number seven. If you're able, please join me by standing as we look to God's word this morning. Acts chapter 18, verse 1, it says, After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth and found a certain a Jew named Aquila, born of Pontus, lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all the Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. And because he was of the same craft, he abode with them and wrought, for by their occupation they were tent makers. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. And when Silas and Timotheus were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. And when they opposed themselves and blasphemed, he shook his raiment and said unto them, Your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean. From henceforth I will go unto the Gentiles. Verse number 7. And he departed thence and entered into a certain man's house named Justice, one that worshipped God, whose house joined hard to the synagogue. And uh, we're going to be uh, preaching this morning. The title of the message is Let's Go to Church. Amen. Let's go to church. Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray that you help us this morning as we look to the Word of God. Lord, I pray that we will be excited about the house of God. Lord, there was a time, Lord, that people were, could not wait to get in the church house. And Lord, I, I'm saddened to even think of how many don't even go to church anymore. Lord, I pray that you help us to realize the importance of church and how important it is. And Lord, how it's such a blessing to us. And I pray that you help us in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. When we think about church, you know, people go into church and some people say why they don't go to church anymore and why people are not faithful anymore. Kind of reminds me of a story, a funny story I read. Uh, there was a ship that was sailing past a remote island and discovered a man stranded on his island who had been there for several years. They went ashore to rescue the man and noticed that he built three huts. So he built three huts on this island. Uh, and uh, he, he built these three huts for himself. They asked him, what is this first hut for? What did you build this for? He said, that's my house. Okay, so what's the second hut for? Well, that's my church. Okay, so what's this other hut for? Oh, that's the church I used to go to. <laughs> you know, there's something about just falling in love with your church, amen? There's something about not just having a church to go to, but to say, I belong to church. This is my church. Uh, and to better put your heart. You know, people put their heart in things. People put their heart in what they want to put their heart into. Well, you know... It's just, it, it, it's just uncomfortable at church. Well, people sit out in the woods in the wintertime hunting deer when it's uncomfortable. Well, you know, it's just, it's just hard. Well, people do what they want to do. People go to games. There are people that never miss a game. They'll go season passes, these games. Cold, heat, rain, snow. There's snow here, snow. And, and they, they make that. Why? Because they put their heart in that. The Bible says in, in Psalms 122, verse 1, it says, I was glad. What's it say? I was what? Glad. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. You know, as a young boy, uh, seven, eight, nine years old, uh, we started going to church as a family. And as a young boy, my dad did not give us a option if we wanted to go to church. Uh, we were drugged to church. You know, talk about drug problems. We had drug problems. We were drugged to church. But you know, the thing is, he didn't just send us to church. My dad took us to church. 
We went to church together. We went to church, my mom, my dad, my brothers, myself, and we, we had a place like you do. We sat in church. We sat there Sunday morning. We came back. Uh, Dr. Tom Malone in Pontiac, Michigan had a discipleship like we're doing today at 5 o'clock, and we went to that. Uh, we went to Sunday school. We went to morning service. We went to discipleship. We went back Sunday night. We went back on Tuesday for soul winning. We went back to church on Wednesday. We went back to church on Saturday for whatever was going on. My dad made church important for us boys. By the way, guess what? All of us boys still go to church because it was made important. It wasn't something, well, if you have nothing else to do, you can go to church. But make sure, I mean, if there's other things you got to do, you got to. No, we had church as a priority. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go unto the house of the Lord. Now look back to Acts chapter number 18. Here we see the story how that Paul is preaching to the Jews and how that they are uh, pushing back and they're rejecting the message. And so then he goes over to the Gentiles. Now we see a Gentile here in verse number 7. It says here, and he departed thence into a certain man's house. So here he leaves the temple, leaves the house of God where he's debating with the Jews. He went to a man's house named Justice. Uh, they say his name was Timothy Justice, one that what? Worship God, amen? He worshiped God. You know, we ought to be in the business of worshiping the Lord. We ought to be in the business of pleasing God. Hey, our life, the Bible says you are bought with the blood of Jesus Christ. If you're saved today, if you're born again, God ought to be the most important thing in our life. It ought not be anything else that takes the place of God. I remember as a young boy and how that we lived in Vermont. And in Vermont, if you didn't get your shopping done on Saturday, uh, you're going to have a hard time finding things on Sunday because everything was closed on Sunday except a, a little country store or a gas station. Why? Because church was important. Back in the 60s, late 60s, close to early 70s, uh, J.C. Penney's used to always have their doors closed on Sunday. And it was always known for that. All of a sudden, back in the late 60s, uh, there was a lot of competition, a lot of these discount stores opening up, and they started to open their doors on Sunday. So J.C. Penney, being a Christian man that owned the company, uh, I'm not sure if he ran it that, at that time, but their company decided, and I think it was during Christmas time, to open for Sunday, and then after Christmas, they'll close it back down. But after Christmas, it was just a couple weeks where they finally opened it back up on a Sunday and never closed it again. And now it's, there, there's so much out there going on. There's so many things we could be involved in on a Sunday that, you know, it's, it's hard to go to church. But, you know, we ought to make church important. Why? Hey, we ought to please God. The Bible says here that uh, the justice, one that worshiped God, whose house, what's that word say? Joined hard. You see it there? Verse 7, look at it. The Bible says his house was joined what? Hard. Now it says he was joined hard. That word hard means joined next to the wall. of the, He was connected to the house of God. His house was built on the wall of the temple. It says here that he worshiped God whose house joined hard to the synagogue. That means he was close to the house of God. 1 Kings chapter 21 verse 1. It came to pass after these things that Naboth the Jezreelite had a vineyard which was in Jezreel hard by the palace of Ahab, the king of Samaria. So here we see that word hard in two places, meaning connected to, right there, right beside. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 22, it tells us, Hebrews 10, verse 22, it says, let us draw near. It says, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. What's the Bible tell us? Draw near. You know, we ought to want to be more in church than out of church. I want to get more involved than out of church. Well, you're the pastor. You have to be here. Yes. But you know, there was a time I wasn't a pastor. And you know what? It, for me, I've always went to church. COVID was rough. And by the way, COVID messed up a lot of people. There was people before COVID, they were going to church. During COVID, they were excused to stay home in their pajamas and watch church, eating 
Fritos and Cheetos and whatever else they're eating. And, you know, and, you know it's funny, during COVID, everybody, uh, I don't know about everybody, but we did. We got in front of the TV. We're all dressed in suits and all. We're dressed up for church. Because it's church time. We're watching the TV. You know, people started doing that for the first couple of weeks. After, after that, man, they, they got up like a minute before the service, hair standing up. Cornflakes in their eyes, right? In their pajamas watching the service, falling asleep. You know, the devil used that COVID to get people out of church. And I tell you what, it's time to get back in church, amen? Hey, there's no COVID here. Get back in church. We ought to get in the house of God. We ought to be where we're supposed to be. The Bible says his house was joined hard to the synagogue. The Hebrews, in Hebrews, it exhorts us to draw near to God with a sincere heart. Our faith is to be constant in a constant movement towards God and pleasing the Lord and having faith. You know, you say, well, I want to please God with my life. Pastor, I want to do what pleases God. I want to make God happy. Well, I tell you what, there's some things that makes God happy, and that's being in the house of God that makes God happy. Well, I, I want to do everything but that. I want to please God but that. I don't, I, I'll sacrifice anything else but that. No, God says, give me all your heart. God says, give me all of your time. God says, give me all of your energy. Why? We are to... Please God. Faithfulness involves attending church faithfully. Hey, I want to be faithful to the house of God. Uh, I don't want to just go just one time a week. Now, I understand some people have to work and things happen. But you know what? If we're able to, if we find ourselves on a Sunday night sitting home watching football when we ought to be in church, shame on us. If we find ourselves on Wednesday night just goofing off and playing uh, bingo or whatever on Wednesday instead of being the house of God, shame on us. Why? We ought to be faithful to the house of God. Faithfulness to church is necessary for the growth in the Christian life. Hey, I, I tell you what, there, now there's some churches, honestly, it would be easy not to go back because every sermon's the same. You know, I, I heard one, one uh, and, and I heard this one preacher say that they stopped doing Sunday night services. And somebody asked him, why did you stop doing Sunday night services? He goes, well, because the same people come back. And it made no sense to me. But it ought to be that we come back to the house of God to be fed. You know, it, it, I, I remember Dr. Tom, uh, Dr. Lee Robinson. He was, he, was a, he was a gentleman. He wore double-breasted suit coats. Uh, he was a statesman, and he would say, takes, takes three to thrive, three to thrive, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, three to thrive, three to thrive. You know, it does. I tell you what, I, I, Sunday morning, we get to church, we get encouraged, we get, uh, we get to the word of God in us, we hear the music, we get excited. Oh, I want to serve God. Come back Sunday night, man, get that shot again. I want to serve God. Monday, Tuesday, out there working, doing, man, I can't wait till Wednesday night when the doors are cracked open. Man, I can't wait to get in the house of God on Wednesday night. I need to be there for a Bible study. Well, I tell you, we ought to be busy about serving God. Uh, here it tells us that we are to, to, to draw nigh to God. Faithfulness is necessary for the Christian growth. The Bible tells us in Psalms 122 verse 1, it says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go unto the house of the Lord. Oh, you know, we ought to be glad to have a church. We ought, we ought to be glad that we have a pastor that prepares messages for the church. We ought to be glad that we have a music man that prepares music for the church. We ought to be glad that we have teachers and, and we have ushers and we have deacons and we have the people of the church that work the ministry of the church. We ought to be glad, but we ought to be glad when they say unto us, hey, let us go unto the house of the Lord. Oh, I tell you what, I want to go to church. Hey, do you want to go to church? I want to go to church. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Psalms 84 verse 10, for a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper. Jack, here you go. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. Oh, I tell you what, if I could just be a doorkeeper, man, if I could just be an usher, man, I tell you, if I could just get in, man, you know, Black Friday, they have those doors, they, they shut them down, and, and then Black Friday, a certain time they have discounts. There are people piling out there. As soon as you open, they run over the guy at the door trying to get in. Man, wouldn't it be good if people are waiting at the door for us to unlock it? Open the door. We're here for church. We ought to be excited. Man, I want to get in church. We don't come to church to get out. We come to church to get in. I want to get in more. Hey, I want to do more. I want to be more faithful. Brother Luke Deschamps, he's our, uh, a young man, him and his wife. 
uh, or have started a church, they only meet on Wednesday. You know, and he desires to have a building so they can start meeting on Sunday. He's one of our missionaries, one of, one of the missionaries that we want to take on for support as a church planner, starting his church in Chandler. But you know what? You know how they wish they had a building like us to meet in on Sunday? They wish they could have a building like us to meet back on Sunday night. Well, I tell you what, we have something good here. God's given us this place here. By the way, you know what? It takes air condition. It takes heat. It takes electricity to have the house. Hey, if we're going to use all that, if we're going to spend money on that, let's fill up the church. Let's get some people in here. If the church is prepared, if the, the lights are on, if, if we just bought a new PA system, if we got these things going on and, and we're working on the choir and the choir is, is doing an awesome job and we have music people and we have ushers and we have uh, young people come in the church and things are happening, we ought to say... Hey, I was glad when they sent unto me, let us go unto the house of the Lord. I'm going to be, Pastor, you can count on me. I'll be back Sunday night. You can count on me. I'll be back Wednesday night. We ought to be busy about serving God. Psalms 84, verse 10, for a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. You know, we find time for what we want to find time for. Amen. Hey, we find, well, it's just, you know, I'm just tired. I'm going to tell you, Kip, I appreciate Kip. Kip has cancer. Kip is in a ton of pain right now. He's struggling. But he said, Pastor, as long as I can be there, I'm going to be there. Man, we ought to say, what's holding me back? Oh, I tell you, there are things that sometimes there are things that I want to do so bad. I'll walk out in the rain to do it. I tell you, sometimes I want to do something so bad. I'll go out in the, the heat of the day and do those things. Why is church so important? Well, let me say quickly. Because Christ started it. Amen. Why is church pastor so important? Because God started the church. I'm so glad that God saved me. I'm so glad I'm born again. I'm so glad I was put in the right church. I'm so glad I got the truth of God's word. But God started the church for me. God started the church for you. The Bible says in Matthew 16 verse 18. And I say also unto thee. Thou art Peter and upon this rock. He says I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. God the Lord Jesus Christ says. I will build my church. Did he build a church to be empty? Did he build a church so we could stay home and not go? No. He built a church for us to go to church. Amen. He built a church for us to go hear the preaching of God's word. 1 Timothy 3, verse 15, But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of the faith, and so we, or the truth. And what we ought to decide today is, if this is the truth, if we have the truth, if we have the right kind of church, if we have the right kind of Bible, if we, if we are commanded to, I tell you what, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be, I'm not going to get more out, I'm going to get more in. I'm going to get to the point, preacher, I'm going to bug you half to death because every time you go by that door, I'm going to think it's opening. I'm going to be there. Why is church so important? Christ started it. Why is church so important? He shed his blood for it. Do you understand the price that was paid for this church? I'm not talking about this building. I'm talking about us to come together. Hey, we see here that Jesus Christ shed his blood. Acts 20 and verse 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. Do you know Jesus Christ died we will come. There are some that they, 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 they consider, consider themselves very faithful because they come Christmas and Easter every year. Now, Easter, we come to Easter to celebrate the resurrection of the Savior. But do you realize that he died for the church? He died so we could have salvation. He died for us so we have hope. He says, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And he's coming back again. But while he's gone, he says, stay busy. Get in the house of God. Get under the preaching of the word. Hey, get in there and sing. Well, you know, I just, I, I just don't have to be in church every service because I read my Bible. Do you know church isn't only about you getting something out of it? 
Do you know, church, we'll have people come in that are new Christians on a Sunday night or a Wednesday night, and if you're not here, you can't encourage them. I had a homeless guy tell me, he's sitting over there on the sidewalk. We had a service for the homeless. I walked over and I said, now, sir, I'd like to invite you over to our service. I don't need to go to your service. I can worship God right from here. I said, of course you can. I told him this, but you know what? <clears throat> you can't help people. Over there, there are people that need a smile. They need somebody that's happy, somebody that will shake their hand, somebody to pray for them. After I told him the purpose also of him going to church, he said, you know, you're right. I never saw it that way. You know what? We don't come to church just to get. We come to church to give. Hey, I want to get in church to encourage. I want to walk around. And by the way, when you get in church, you ought to shake some hands. Amen. You ought to walk. We ought to be known as the friendliest church in Mesa, Arizona. You ought to walk around and shake the hands and shake the hands and shake the hands and get to know people and talk to people. Why? That's what we ought to do in church. Why? Because he died for it. Oh, I tell you, he shed his blood. When I think about it, that he shed his blood for the church house. He has given his own blood, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Why do we go to church? Because we're commanded to. So why, what if we don't go to church? Then we're disobedient. The Bible says, Hebrews 10, 24, And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. What is the assembly? The ecclesia, the called out assembly. Preacher, you know, uh, I just don't like that kind of preaching. You're, I mean, you're stepping on my toe. I don't like that kind of preaching. What, you want watered-down preaching? Hey, you, you, you want, you want a, a, a lace-wearing preacher? You want somebody that, that just tickle your ear? No, what we ought to do is we ought to say, Preacher, preach the word. What does God say? I want to know what God says. What does his word say? What does God want from us? I'll tell you what he says. He said, forsake not the assembly. He says, no, he says not to forsake the assembly ourselves together as a man or some is, but exhorting one another. And he says, and so much more. What does that mean? We ought to do more of it, not do less of it. You know, I, I, you know, I wonder... This morning, are some of us here that can look back in the years where we used to be real faithful, but we're not anymore? Hey, the Bible says, he says we ought to be faithful. He says, forsake not that assembly, but exhorting one another so much the more as you see the what? day appro Do you see the day of his coming back soon? Israel just got attacked last night. Over, I think, 160, uh, th there was drones, there was ballistic missiles, there was all, all kinds of things going on. Wars happening on Israel. We heard about that, didn't we? We know, we, we know that someday Russia and China, which are backing Iran, is going to attack Israel. The day's coming. I tell you, he says, do more for me the more you see the end coming. You know, we ought not be doing less for God. We, not, we ought not be going to church less for God. What we ought to do is say, God, I want to do more. I want to get in. I want to get all the way in. You know, swimming, uh, sometimes we'll get into, I told this in my Sunday school class, sometimes we'll get over here and, 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 and somebody's over there and they, they're, they're swimming and they say, come on in. The water's good. And you come over here and you touch it and you're like, I don't know. Uh, that, that seems cold and, and that just takes a lot of effort and, and I, 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 you know, I, I'm getting older and I got little pain in my back and and it's just a little harder to go come on in man you'll love it oh let me see here uh, uh oh i don't know i i mean i haven't been to church that faithful in a long time and well i tell you what you're missing now come on in uh, uh, okay get out of the way you know i'm gonna do, i'm gonna jump it and you take off and you jump it i need help get me back up there but you know, when we decide to get all the way in, I'm talking about get all the way in. Don't just say, I'm just going to go a little bit. Do you know this town here, there are people dying and going to hell. There are families that are, that, that are messed up, people that are caught up in religion but not salvation, and the Christians are fast asleep. The devil has rocked us to sleep. What I'm saying this morning, let's get all the way in. Hey, this morning, let's do more for God. This morning, let's decide that God is going to be important and that we're going to make God most important. Decide today to get in, not get out. Why? Because he commands us to. He says, forsake not the assembly. Why should we get more into church? Because we all need it. I don't know, maybe you're a super godly Christian and you don't need more church, but I tell you what, I'm a wicked sinner and I need more church. I'm a saved sinner, but I'm still a sinner. 
I need to hear the preaching of God's word. I need to hear the singing of God's word. I need to, I need to be around the fellowship of God's people. I need to be encouraged. And I tell you what, I said this already, but we look back in the years when we were younger maybe and say, oh, I remember being faithful and involved, but I got older and I just kind of pulled away. Hey, I'm going to tell you, how are the young people going to know to be faithful if the older people are not faithful? We ought to get more involved. We need it. The Bible says, Romans 10, verse 14, How then shall they call on him who they have not believed? And how shall they believe on him who they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As is written, that how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Notice what it says here. How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe on him who they have not what? Heard. You know, we, we got to hear in the house of God. Come in the house of God. I tell you, I'll promise you this, church. As your pastor, I will beg God for sermons to feed us. And Lord, give me truth. And Lord, and I'll, I'll promise you this. I'll always tell you the truth. And I will preach the truth of God's word. And I'll tell you this. I'll work hard. And I'll give my very best to the church. And I will sacrifice even my body for the church. But folks, let me say, I can't do it alone. We do, as a church, need to rise up together. And we need to say, I'm going to do my very best. I'm going to give my very best to God. I'm going to go my very best. I'm going to be there. So Sunday morning. I'm going to be there Sunday night. I'm going to be there Wednesday night. I'm going to give my best. Hey, we need it. Ecclesiastes 5 verse 1. Keep thy foot when thou goest in the house of God and be more ready to hear. You know, we ought to come to God's house to hear. Oh, I tell you, I need to hear the preaching of God. You ever had a sermon that encouraged you? Wow, that sermon really encouraged me. And if I didn't hear it, I wouldn't have been encouraged. That sermon really pointed out some things I needed to change. I can't believe it. Thank you, Pastor, for bringing that sermon. It helped me. Okay, but what about Sunday night? You missed out on that one. What about Wednesday night? You missed out. By the way, you say, well, I watch it on, on live stream. And I know some people physically cannot be here. And I understand that. I'm not picking on anybody. But I'm going to tell you, live stream is not the same. Live stream, I can't hear them. Turn it up. Oh, look at it. The screen went off. Hey, look at that person over there. What are they doing? And, and we're so distracted. There's something about giving focus in the house of God. Focus to the Lord. I want to focus on his preaching. I want to focus on his singing. We see here we ought to be in the house of God. Why? Because we need it. We ought to be in the house of God because God blesses us for it. You want a blessing? You want God to bless? Oh, I'm so blessed. My, my boys, you know, uh, they went to church this morning. Have grandkids in church. You know why? God has blessed me. Hey, we ought to, we ought to re realize that. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth the covenant and the mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. You know what? Us folks, we got to pass it on. How do we pass it on? We don't just tell people what we used to do. Let them see us. I tell you, if the candle is a small candle, remember when the candle was a, the new candle, we're babies, and that candle's burning, and we're saying, well, we're getting closer to that wick there. I'm saying, don't turn off the flame. I mean, you might have to dig out the wax a little bit more, but you light that thing back up. And you decide, I'm going to burn for God till the day I die. I'm going to be an example, and I'm going to encourage my grandkids and encourage my kids to serve God. Why? It's important. God blesses it. Next, why do we go to church? It encourages others by it. When we attend church faithfully, we are giving a visual testimony of our commitment to our Lord and Savior. The Bible says in Colossians 3, 16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching, admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and, uh, with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Hebrews 10, uh, it tells us here in verse 24, and let us uh, consider one another to provoke unto love the good works, not forsaking the assembly ourselves together. You know, they, they see you when you don't forsake the assembly they see your good works. They see that you're, you know, your neighbors ought to see you going to church Sunday morning. Oh, there, there they go to church. They ought to see you Sunday night loading up. Where are you going, neighbor? Going to church. Don't you know there's a game going on? We're going to church. Hey, you want to come over to our garage? We're going to have a block party. Going to church. Going to church. Going to church. Why? Church is important. Wednesday night. Oh, I tell you, Wednesday night, it takes a little bit more effort. But I'm going to church. I'm going to church. I'm going to church. Hey, God blesses us for it, encourages others by it. 
It's where we come to worship him. We, you know, the church is an ecclesia, is a called out assembly. Well, I can have church at home. No, you can't. Well, I have church over here in this other place. No, you won't. Church is a place where a pastor, God put a pastor over it. A church is a place that God set aside where we come together. Amen. The right kind of church. We come together, an ecclesia. Hey, I, I say this morning, hey, we ought to do it. Why? It's a place of worship. Matthew 18, 20, for where two or three are gathered together, my name, there I am in the midst of them. Matthew 21, verse 13, he said unto them, it is written, my house shall be cal called the house of prayer. Hey, it's a place where we come to worship. It's a place where we come to pray. It's a place where we come to sing. It's a place where we come to hear the word of God. So how should we do it? So what should we do? What should we do? Acts 2.37. And now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, these Gentiles, these that got saved, men and brethren, what shall we do? Is that, is that our question this morning to God? What shall we do? Well, uh, the preacher's saying this, Lord, but what should we do? I'll tell you what we should do. First off, we should understand it's a command. Not forsaking the assembly yourselves together as a man or some is. It's a command. What should we do? Obey the command. Hey, God commanded it. Let's obey God. Let's, hey, we're commanded to be in the house of God. We're commanded to be right there. Hey, we ought to come to the spout where the blessings come out. Amen. That's not my own quote. I got that from somebody else. But still, it's a good quote. Man, we ought to come to the, where the spout, where the blessings come out. Man, I tell you what, uh, there are people that, that, that go places where there's spring water and there's a little spigot coming out of a mountain and people are lined up to fill their jugs up. Hey, I tell you what, bring your jug Sunday morning. Bring your jug Sunday night. Bring the, the right kind of jug. Bring your jug Wednesday night and let God fill that jug up. Hey, God will give you living water that you thirst no more. Oh, so we're, we're discouraged. We're down. We're depressed. We're having problems. But then we look and say, hey, well, I'm not faithful to God. I'm not faithful to church. I'm not faithful doing what I ought to be doing. Hey, no wonder we're discouraged. No wonder we're down. We ought to get in the house of God. Understand it's a command. Decide to make church a priority. If the church was not, if the church was not perfect, a perfect place, just as a few years after the resurrection of Christ, if it wasn't perfect then, how can we expect the church to be perfect place today, 2,000 years later? Well, I just, you know, the church, you know, there's a bunch of imperfect people there. But you know what? You are too, and I am too. It is important to raise your children with an understanding that going to church should be a priority. It ought to be a priority. Let them know church people, even pastors, aren't perfect, but the church is a special place to God. So don't make excuses for not going to church. God, this is, you died for it. Lord, you've given to us a church. Lord, this is your place. This is your church. And God, help me to get more in, not more out. You know, you go back to England. And in England, there was a time in England where church was a priority. And people were serving God. There was great revivals in England. But they started drifting away from God. And now, you don't find very many people going to church. Uh, I tell you, folks, we ought to take it. Don't wait till the doors are locked up by the government and say, oh, they don't let us have church anymore. I wish, man, do you remember the days we were meeting in church? Oh, I miss those days. No, we have the doors open. Get in the house of God. Decide to be faithful to every service. The Bible says not forsaking the assembly. What does that mean? Anytime there's assembly, don't forsake it. Well, I just don't agree with that. Okay, so you just said you don't agree with this. That's the Bible. The Bible says forsake not the assembly. So that means every time that door's open for church, we ought to be coming in. Unless we're sick, I understand that. And sometimes there's other ailments, things that keeps us. But if, if we know deep in our heart, I could have went if I really wanted to. I could have called somebody. They would have picked me up. You know what? I'm going to be more faithful. I'm going to get more in. I'm going to do more. I tell you what, you'll be encouraged by it. Hey, decide to be faithful to every service. Encourage others to come along. The Bible says in Psalms 122, verse 1, I was glad when they said unto me, let's go in the house of the Lord. You know, there are people that would probably be glad to hear from you. You know, friends, family, children, grandchildren. Hey, let's go to church. You know, maybe they'll say, I was glad when grandma invited me to church. I was glad when mom and dad invited me to church. I was glad when my neighbor invited me to church. I was glad when my friend invited me to church. Should I jump again? Jump again? 
You know what we had to decide right now is church is a priority. God died for it. God, God gave it to us. He meets with us. He loves church. If Jesus was on this earth right now, he would be here. I mean, this is important. But is it important to us? Is it a priority? Well, you know, it's just, it's just hard. But we find effort and strength and time to do everything else. Why don't we just decide today, for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will get in church. We're going to be faithful. I, it doesn't matter what other people do. It doesn't matter what other people say. You can count on me. We're going to be in the house of God. Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray that you help us this morning. Lord, you know my heart. Lord, I love these people that you've put in this church. Lord, your people here that I get to pastor. Lord, I love them. I want to give them the very best from your word. I want to help them. And God, I know if we're not here on Sunday nights, if we're not here on Wednesday nights, Lord, we cannot be helped. Lord, you could give me a sermon to preach, something to teach. And Lord, if they're, they're not here, I can't help them. And, and Lord, I know it's for me too, but God, I pray that today we'll make a decision to be faithful to the church house. Anytime we can, we're going to be here. And we're going to be here more than we can. I pray, Lord, you help us to make this decision today to step out and to start serving you more and be more faithful. Help us, Lord, in Jesus' name. With every head bowed and every eye closed, I wonder how many here would lift their hand and say, Pastor, if I die today, I know I'm going to heaven. I've been saved. I've been born again. I know it. I know it. I know it. Would you raise your hand? I know I'm, I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm going to heaven. I know it. Thank you. You may put your hands down. How many would say, Pastor, to be very honest, I see what's going on with Israel. I see what's going on with around our world. And Pastor, if, if something were happened, I died, or if the Lord came back, I'm afraid I would not go to heaven. But I would like to know that. Please pray for me. Would you raise your hand? Anyone like that? I'm not sure I'm going to heaven, but I would like to know, please pray for me, preacher. I, I want you to pray for me. I wonder, did God speak to your heart about something this morning? Hey, can we be more faithful? Can we get in more? Hey, if God's given you that ability, and sometimes even when it seems like you don't have the availability, you don't have the strength, are you asking God to make it available for you? God, work this out for me. God, do something for me to help me in this area. I believe we'll pray that God would do it. Heavenly Father, I pray you help us. Lord, help us to make a decision today to be more faithful to the house of God or to stay faithful if we are faithful to the house of God as much as we can. I know some people, Lord, can't be here every service. I understand that. But I wonder about the others that could be. Lord, help us to make that decision today. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all stand and you want to join the church, please come up here, talk to Brother Steve. If you're here to be baptized, you come up at this time and talk to Steve and Sharon here. Let me encourage you right now. If God spoke to your heart, let's not just stand there. Let's kneel down. Let's sit somewhere. Let's pray. Let's come to the altar. And let's talk to God about what he talked to us this morning. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bids me.
Okay, if you'll take your songbooks, you may have a seat. We're waiting for the baptism. Turn to page number 66. Let's sing to God be the glory, great things he has done. Number 66. sins number 201 oh, maybe not all right this is Luke Kengraf Luke have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior yes praise the Lord turn this way if you like turn around and then put across your arms Luke I baptize you my brother in the name of the Father Son Holy Ghost very likeness of his death Raised and his likeness of resurrection to walk in the of life. This is Danielle uh, Perez. Daniel, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior? Yes. Praise the Lord. Come forward a little bit. Danielle, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, bear it like of his death, raise and right, like his resurrection, and walk in newness of life. Let's give her a hand. Amen. Amen. The servant said, Lord, has done as thou hast commanded, yet there's room. We're running a little bit late this morning, but this is a good reason to run a little bit late. Amen. Amen. The restaurant will wait for you. Your table will be fine. Amen. So let's do this here. Let's sing a couple verses. I'm going to get ready because I'd like to come out and shake your hand. But make sure that you shake Luke and Danielle's hand if, when they come out, okay? God bless you. Oh, we do have one joining the church, Miss Joyce. I'll say that when I come out, okay? So let's go to 201. 201. 
It's called I'm, I'm a Willow Tree, Watch Me Snap. I mean, bend, bend, bend. That's what it was. 201. to have Miss Joyce with us. Tell me, uh, tell me your last name. Jincola. Jincola. And she was a member here for many years, and then uh, she had moved to another church for a while, and she's coming back home. Amen. It's good to have you back with us. And so she's coming to join the church, and so we're excited for her. All those that are excited for her, say amen. 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 God bless you. And uh, if you want here in a second, Mrs. Butler's going to walk with you. And we're going to stand in the lobby so everybody can shake your hand. And uh, so we're excited about her joining. Uh, we do have another one that's going to be joining probably next week, so we're excited about her as well. Uh, good baptism. Praise the Lord. You pray for Luke and Danielle, and uh, you pray for God to bless her life. I know Miss Connie. Where are you at, Miss Connie? I know she's excited. That's her grandson, so that is exciting for her. Uh, don't forget, 5 o'clock. What's going on at 5 o'clock? Choir practice. Yeah, but besides that, what else? discipleship if you have nice signed up make sure you get signed up back at the table let's all stand and uh let's see yes ma'am okay 
good to have you here. I imagine you're proud too, aren't you? God bless you. Thank you for being here this morning. All right, we're going to dismiss in prayer, and then once we do, my wife and I and Joyce will be back there. Make sure you come by and shake her hand. And then also, don't forget Jim and Sandy. This is their last Sunday with us, so if you're not going to be here tonight, make sure that you, you shake their hand and let them know how much you'll miss them and you keep them in prayer. And then Danielle and uh, Luke will be back here. Make sure you let them know how much you're proud of them as well. All right, Brother Mike.